The ocean could be an art space or a space of art and culture somehow. And then lately I've been thinking a lot about it. And it was the other day when I was um, describing the fact that in many, if not all colonized uh, territories, uh, people cannot swim. And there is a parallel in between the fact that people cannot swim um, and the, the imperial ocean. So the ocean um, on the view of the colonizers has been kept for themselves. And this, which is a symbolic power act, is, is in, immensely powerful. So powerful that it really um, negates the relationship with the ocean to millions and millions and millions of people. So it's very uncommon to go um, to non-Western uh, spaces where the Western uh, colonies have been um, that you find people that are at easy at the water, that they can't swim and so on. And um, I think that it is this type of uh, power, symbolic power, that associates the ocean with um, an entity that is not, is not fully yours, uh, that you cannot touch, um, that it has been possessed by others, others that came to your own place and took it, took it from, from you, took it perhaps centuries ago. But that act of taking it from you is still absolutely, is absolutely there. So when I said that we would like, or it would be interesting to explore the ocean as a space of art and culture, what I meant is exactly to, to de-imperialize the ocean, to make it so um, that you can transition um, to a different space from this space of power. And I say transition because it may not stay or it may not even be like, you know, we are talking in a way that we don't know what's gonna be, but imagine that the ocean could be a space of art where you kind of plastically uh, relate to the creatures that you kind of also poetically. So it's kind of a start of a normal relationship, perhaps of a relationship that's more stable or stable in under other conditions. With, but in any case, it's not scientific first. It's a space of possibility and emergence of a completely different practice that may lead um, to the recuperation of the ocean to those territories. Well, the fact that we many times talk about decolonization, but in talking about one way of uh, taking um, the power out, we forgot that everything should be decolonized, even the, the organs of our body, uh, the ways that we relate to things. And lately I've been very interested by a research, so in neuroscience, that they have been discovering that um, those that are very, very good in playing an instrument are good because they can listen through their skin. So what they discover, or what they have been observing is that um, it's not only that they are geniuses and gifted, but why they are so gifted, what makes them so gifted. And I love when, when some of these um, myths of the genius gets kind of um, deconstructed or analyzed under a complete different perspective, because of course in the arts, um, we have been for years and years, centuries, um, obliging ourselves to think about, um, about the artist as an extraordinary entity. But the extraordinary has to do with a different combination, a different methodic combination, if you want, um, among two senses of our body. So one, which is the skin, so the, the, the tissue, um, that is sensing the sound um, in your fingers, but not only, and the signals that this sensing is sending to the auditive nerve. And the fact that they kind of completely synchronize in ways that are unprecedented in, in from human to human makes these people uh, especially able um, to approach uh, music and an instrument. And I think that this is really interesting, the possibilities that science is discovering through a different study of not only um, analyzing data, but discovering that the combinatoria, like the way that we um, think about the organization of senses and information in our own body runs a completely different path, a path that uh, before was completely 
pyramidal, hierarchical, from the brain to the rest of the senses, from the head to the rest of the wall, from um, the eyes to all the images where all the senses were kind of um, subsumed under these two, um, these two big entities, like as if the eyes were directly, the direct assistance of, of the brain. And I think that um, I think about this um, notion of listening through the skin in relationship to another notion that totally interests me, which is um, the way that we have been thinking about attention. So attention, which is a big thing um, in pedagogy, like in all the schools, but um, in life has been also a very centralized, um, like it has been described in a very centralized way. So there is uh, people that possess and have uh, attention in a classical way, and they can direct this attention in a, some sort of linear way towards the wall. And these people have no problem, so to say. And there's other people that are, they have difficulties in, um, in focusing. And this non-centralized attention, which I think is super important because I suppose that attention has been also through, historically speaking, a process of decolonizing this idea of its own centralization is dispersed. And this dispersion is now a common trait of many people. So, so many millions of people have attention deficit disorders. And this is now a disorder, but perhaps is an attention deficit ability is the ability of actually decentralizing um, this function and diversing attention towards paths and organs that perhaps in the future, let's say 10, 20 years, uh, scientists would tell us, oh, it was not a disorder. These people were kind of ahead of us in presenting a complete different um, idea of how to think and how actually um, a linguistic uh, relation, very centralized, that we have been having uh, from modernity on cannot be deconstructed only by the will. So we cannot stop uh, thinking and talking as we have been learning to do it, but our own brain does it. So historically dissolves a capacity in order to find new capacities. Let's put it that way. Attention deficit disorder may be an adaptative disorder uh, towards a new, a new era. So, and I think I see um, in thinking about the ocean, in thinking about the connection in between um, the organs in a different way and the question of attention, um, an incredible commonality. And I must say, I confess that all this thinking for me has been what the ocean brought to me. So the ocean brought to me the possibility of this incredible spread, uh, this in incredible, um, yeah, wife so that this not being focused it would be very strange to focus on the ocean what are you focusing on so in just thinking and imagining the ocean you should have attention attention deficit disorder you should kind of diversify your attention in so many millions of manners that is incredibly difficult for the human to pay attention to the ocean so in that way by losing our uh, focal attention, we would become more oceanic. So this is what I think that I understand under the ocean method, because it's absorbing the, the logic of the substance of the ocean in order to reflect many other processes, historical, neurological, scientific, artistic processes, and then apply the ocean thinking into what I do. Oh, my God.